Please stand. Cadets, if you would, uh, please tell us your name, your class, and your plans for after high school. Hi, my name is Montserrat Jimenez. I'm a senior this year. My plans after high school is to go to the college and get a medical degree. Good evening. My name is Cadet and you're in very strong off-red. I'm a junior, and I plan on to let them the baby outside. My name is Jennifer Proctor. I am a senior this year. I am a cadet of the chief petty officer. My plan after high school is to attend college and be a lawyer. Good evening. My name is Duke Weber. I am a freshman and I am a cadet team and apprentice. And my plans after high school are to open a private business. Thank you very much. Next, oh, the next item on the agenda is uh, school recognition. We have Mr. Boatwright from uh, Angel and School Authority Academy. But tell us about all the new things that are going on. Of course. Okay, so for our appearance of the herd, of course, you know, it's an award that recognizes. Our certified and classified staff for their exceptional leadership, exemplary work performance, enthusiastic attitude, and commitment to the Gainesville City School System. The award acknowledges those outstanding individuals who work above and beyond in getting the job done and for being a true hero using their hearts everywhere to reach out to others. And I'm going to ask Ms. Masters to come up and she's going to introduce our certified hero of the herd. Okay, so our certified staff, the um, person who receives the award is Rebecca Bowen. And some of the things that the nominators um, say this that they make is that she is a godsend to fifth grade. She's a fantastic team leader as well. And her new teacher that she is mentoring 
says that she goes above and beyond the call of teaching and has been an outstanding mentor so far. She is patient and caring with her students, encourages them to work together as a family. And she is an active um, member of the PBIS Tier 2 team. She is actually leading that for us this year. And she assists the team in establishing behavioral strategies that use positive reinforcement and that will create situations where all students. present our classified hero to her that I do not see her here yet. She's got two small children, so I'm not surprised. <laughs> so our classified hero to her is Ms. Nancy Castillo Garcia, and she is our parent liaison. Nancy is a team player, and she goes out of her way to help and step in whenever she is needed. She is one to know exactly what to do to make this office run smoothly. She is very knowledgeable of our procedures and is a great asset to our school and our office team. She always has a great positive attitude. Even though Ms. Castillo wears a lot of different hats, she takes on each responsibility with a positive attitude. We would be lost without her. And as always, she is helpful, has a cheerful disposition, she stays calm in all situations, and she is very understanding. Ms. Nancy Castillo. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
with some ideas, settling on the day, working with Mr. Smith and Mr. Adrian on getting some celebration ideas in order for hoping for something maybe October or November. Also, for our challenges, we finished up on our universal scrimmage. That's our testing at the beginning. Our beginning of the year scores are showing just a slight increase in where we were last year, so that's a good thing. So to make sure that those scores go up even higher, we have, of course, our ESOL, our EIP, our peer support, our RTI happening, as well as, as our connection teachers taking small groups. So I think that's a good thing, too. I hope by our mid-year universal screeners, we're going to see a big increase in our scores. And I also want to say thank you for letting our parents have the choice whenever there's um, a COVID case at school, whether if your child is not sick, then the parent has a choice to let the child stay. And we monitor their symptoms or the parent monitors their symptoms at home. So thank you very much for that. That's it. Any questions for me? No? Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Cobart. <clears throat> Uh, we have uh, a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. So we have a motion by Mr. Smith, a second by Mr. Mitchell. All those in favor? Motion carries. Uh, Mr. Griffin, consent item one on the, uh, item A on the consent agenda. Uh, can you come and make a follow up presentation from your our last meeting? At yeah, the last meeting, uh, the script presented the brand guidelines, and he requested that we put on the consent agenda a place with some of the feedback. We just made one small change to the brain guidelines at Mr. Smith's request. We, on page 18, we originally referred to the um, isolated G, is what I referred to it as. Um, the G that you would see on the letterman's jacket. And we have changed that name to the block G. Um, there was some discussion around calling it the classic block G, but felt like that might be confusing with the classic G, which is what we're referring to. The used to call it the G with the elephant coming out of it. <laughs> Short that to just the classic G, and then the block G. So those were the only edits made, and so now we're seeking approval. Motion to approve. Got a motion by Mr. Smith. Second. Second by Dr. Ramsey. Questions? All those in favor? Question carries. Thank you, Mr. Griffiths. Mrs. Collins, personnel report. Good afternoon, and I said the board please approve the personnel report as submitted. Motion to approve. Second. And a motion by Mrs. Smith, a second by Dr. Ramsey. Any questions? All those in favor? Question carries. Thank you. Yeah, just a few quick things here. Uh, when we get on the number one COVID update, we looked at our data from last week and you know, we were at 35 cases, I believe, is the exact number uh, from that week leading up to Friday. That tied the highest week from last week. So we're going to continue to monitor it right now. We, of course, are still uh, master students, teachers, and doors. And so we hope that by Wednesday or Thursday, we'll see if that trend is continuing down the line. When, when we feel comfortable enough to make a change in our direction, we will let everybody know. Uh, so that is just a quick update on the COVID side. Also, last week, uh, you might even have seen a little bit uh, across other parts of the community or state regarding the SAT release. Uh, I've asked Mr. Green to come and share just some of the talking points related to the, the SAT. You know that every year that this uh, occurs, uh, we are only looking at the senior class that graduate. And so each year when it does get reported like this, we are talking about uh, just the class of 2021. So Mr. Green, if you'll come share a few items related to our results, how we performed, uh, but also board, that's just a, a great time for us to share with you, Mr. Green, as well, that last year was the first year that we provided it during school hours. And so you can talk a little bit about that as well. Well, good evening. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak about Williams. Um, you know, last year when participation was down, 
and the school is down. I sit there and tell you that it's a data point, but it's not the only data point. Uh, that still stands true. Uh, the class of 2021 really was uh, just a, a great class, and it was seen in so many data points uh, participation in dual enrollment, participation in workplace learning, uh, the colleges and universities that they were accepted into, and the career programs they were accepted into. Uh, they did also, uh, as it happens, do very well on the SAT. Uh, now, nationally, we saw a significant drop in the number of test takers. Uh, we saw it locally too. Hall County, for example, saw a 35% reduction in the number of students taking the SAT. We saw a 33% reduction. And that's about consistent with national trends. Um, you know, locally, we had a lot of colleges in the state of Georgia that waived the requirement of the SAT. So students didn't feel that pressure. Then, of course, in uh, like the global pandemic, there were so many other things going on. Um, if, while we saw a drop, a uh, decrease in the number of students taking the SAT, uh, we did see an increase, a uh, pretty significant increase uh, in the mean uh, combined score. We went from 990 combined score last year uh, for the class of 2020 up to a combined mean of 1055 this year. Uh, actually, it was high for those who took the essay was 1110. So we're proud of that, that statistic. Um, what we're also really proud about is that uh, across the board, our largest demographic groups outperformed uh, all national benchmarks. Uh, black students uh, scored an average uh, 963 versus the national average of 934. Hispanic students scored 1017 versus 967, and white students scored an average of 1125 versus 1112. Um, what we also saw that we were really proud of, uh, and this is, uh, I think, a mirror of the great work that's being done as part of our AP program, is uh, participation is much more closely representative of our demographics. Uh, and so while nationally you only see, I think it was 10% uh, of test takers are uh, African American, again, to high school, that number is 20%. Uh, which closely resembles that they make up in our schools. So we're really proud of that and, and, and that we provided access and uh, we're, we're outperforming those national benchmarks. Uh, we're also outperforming national benchmarks uh, when it comes to students whose parents have only a high school diploma or do not have a high school diploma. Uh, again, in terms of participation and performance, students uh, nationally, only 7% of students who take the uh, test our parents did not finish high school. We gained to uh, that number is 17 percent of our test takers. Uh, we have four nationally uh, national benchmarks. Uh, the national benchmark is an average score of 917. Uh, Gainesville High School we scored uh, an average of 1005. Uh, the same is to be said about parents who stopped high school, have no college. Uh, nationally, I mean, 20, that's 23 percent of the test takers, whereas in Gainesville, 7 percent. And we have scored, we have. Uh, perform the national benchmark 1043 to 981. Uh, we also saw a lot more of our students who took the exam with a fee waiver. Uh, nationally, that is only 7% of testing. 7%. Uh, and again, to the high school, that was 36% of our test takers. And again, we have performed those national benchmarks. So and when, we, when we think about, and again, I talk about how this mirrors our dual enrollment program, how it mirrors our AP program, uh, we are I believe providing equitable access for our students. Uh, we are outperforming and closing the gap nationally. Um, of course, a big part of that is due to all the great work that goes on from kindergarten up through uh, 12th grade and the work of the teachers that we have here. Uh, one small adjustment that we did make that we felt made a pretty, pretty big difference was that we offered students the opportunity to take the SAT during the school day. It's the first time we did it, Dr. Goldberg that. She's here today. Uh, and as part of that program, we also offered tutoring through the hub for students who signed up for that. So, the lead up to that SAT school day, we had uh, teachers who volunteered here in the hub uh, to do some kind of you know, SAT test taking strategies. And again, I think you see that that had a positive effect and kind of aligns with the mission of the hub uh, and what we envisioned. So, that's my report. I don't know if there's any other questions, but we have to ask them. Any questions from the screen? Yes, sir. Uh, with colleges dropping, with some colleges dropping the SAT or ACT requirement, 
what then becomes for in focus? So, uh, call for rigor. Um, and again, uh, so they want to see you know, how, rigorous, how rigorous of a schedule the students take. Uh, we're lucky uh, in that we're able to offer more AP programs, and uh, I think there'll be other schools around us, uh, and more opportunities to build enrollment. So, our students were able to show rigor through all of those opportunities. Uh, of course, then they also look at uh, you know, overall performance, they look at uh, the quality of the application itself, uh, involvement in extra and co curricular programs. Uh, volunteering uh, and um, and you know some colleges, uh, although they waived it, uh, did use the SAT score. Students could submit that uh, if they were looking for a pay a more competitive program like an honors college, or if they were looking to secure scholarship dollars. So, is there a bonus uh, if a college does not require uh, a nationally standardized test that for admission? Is there you're saying there is a bonus? If I think the student chooses, it might allow them to present a stronger case for being deserving of a scholarship or a placement in a more competitive program within the college. Yes, sir. Any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Green. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Green. Uh, and going along with the uh, superintendent's update, tomorrow begins our first information session regarding GMS West Campus. Uh, Dr. Brown and Monday Mill will be hosting the first one tomorrow at 6 30. The following Wednesday on September the 29th, we will be meeting at GMS East Campus. And then the following week on October the 7th, on a Thursday, we'll be meeting at GEA. So for the next three weeks, uh, Ms. Griffin has done a great job of getting that information out. Each of the schools prior to uh, their information session will be getting an additional message out. And we really want families to know that all three of these really are the same information. We're just giving you multiple opportunities. We will also uh, likely record a session uh, independent of these three just to make available uh, on demand for uh, parents, for employees, and others that are interested. Board members, if uh, after our next meeting on October the 5th, if you have an evening available on October the 6th, we will be meeting here at the Hub. Uh, to conduct our annual uh, school governance council training, not students, school governance council training. So that will be at six o'clock here at the hub. And also every five years, we have the opportunity to be accredited through what has been known as SACS many years ago to the advanced ed to now COGI. So the last three times we've had this accreditation, it has changed names, but it's still the same standards, the same expectation. Our visit is scheduled for March 7th through the 10th. Uh, 2022. There'll be more information uh, coming forward uh, once we set the schedule for interviews that will be done virtually. So they will not be coming on site to conduct that business. Uh, so, board members, that is my opinion. Is there a point person for that project? Yes, Dr. Rufus is here with us. She is our point person. And then we have three committees underneath her uh, that will be taking uh, lead. I'll be leading the leadership capacity. Um, Dr. Sears will be leading the learning capacity and Ms. Collins will be leading the research capacity. And then we'll have teams underneath that and each school to help support the evidence. All right. <coughs> Next up is Mrs. Petrel. She's got uh, three financial reports to provide us. Good evening. I do have three financial reports, so I will just go through those continuously and continue to end at the federal. Um, the first one is June 2021's uh, fiscal year end report final. Um, we did increase the fund balance uh, for the year of uh, 1.5 million with the ending fund balance of 21,643,000. And uh, our Beginning my balance was twenty million one hundred and two thousand. Our sponsor receipts for June were eight hundred and ninety nine dollars. So this is, a, like I said, the final for June, but it is unaudited at this point. The order of June, you can see the first and second iteration of this. This is the final. Then we'll close out at March 21. Motion to approve. Second. Got a motion by Mr. Smith, second by Mr. Mitchell. 
All those in favor? Motion carried. July, July. Okay. July, um, we have expenditures over revenues at this point of 3.2 million, which is um, what we see typically at this time every year because we only really have QPE revenues coming at this point. So that brings our fund balance down to 18.4 million. And as I explained last time, last month, we do have to report uh, encumbrances at this point to the board. So we have encumbrances of 2.3 million. Uh, this time last year, our fund balance was at 16.9 million. So we're still uh, about that 1.5 million that we have picked up this year um, over last year at this time. Can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. I'm always hesitant to ask this type of question because I feel like I should already know the answer. But, um, can you talk a little bit more about encumbrances and what all falls under that? I'm sure. I know we see that on the August report also. Right. And, and like I said, we'll, that is um, something that has passed that we we'll need report going forward every month to you. What that is, is basically it, it's all the purchase orders. That are still open at this point. So it's everything that the uh, board has committed, the district has committed purchases for. And one of the reasons that that is so large now at this point is some of the things that we do um, that are year long, such as uh, our custodial um, uh, year commitment. We go ahead and issue a purchase order at the beginning of the year. So as the year, you know, monthly payments are made, that's going to you know, go down. So that's why it looks so large at the beginning of the year. Right. We go ahead and issue that PO. So the commitment is out there and it goes against that budget amount. And we know that that, is, that budget is committed. So it's committed, but the expense hasn't yet shown up on a, on a monthly PO. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. Okay, thank you.
not exactly a billet, but the winning um, quote that was provided through uh, USAC's process. So now that we have been funded by the federal funding for uh, our Category 2 funds, we come before you asking for uh, the purchase of these switches and access points for the Advanced Study Center, Gainesville Middle School West, some additional equipment that will go into our existing schools in the amount of $217,817.85. Of that, $125,569.58 will come from general funds, which we had budgeted for. And then an additional $52,851.04 will come from our SWAS 5 funds. I do want to note that what this means we are paying our 20% of the total purchase price, the Category 2 E rate funds cover the, eight, the rest of the 80% of the cost for these items. Any questions? Um, you mentioned other schools, anything of specific or is it across the board in terms of applications? It really is across the board. Um, because of the way E-rate is now being uh, funded, we are able to purchase those items for the district as a whole and then allocate them as needed. So one of the things we're doing is looking at the amount of traffic that is coming through each of our school's network centers. We're looking at the wireless access point usage, doing some uh, uh, surveying of schools to determine where we, we may need to supplement the baseline information or the baseline equipment that we place in the schools uh, over this summer. So this will help us continue to support our growth of need. I guess you probably know we never slow down how much data we want to use. We always increase the amount of data we want to use, and this is going to position us to have enough equipment uh, to stay ahead of the need. Right. Any other questions? Motion to approve. Motion to approve the purchase by Mr. Smith. Second, Second by Dr. Ramsey. All those in favor? Motion carries. And now for our <coughs> new cafeteria meetings. Yes, sir. Uh, I am recommending to the board to approve the purchase of Chromebooks, a charging card, and interactive pipe panels for the new cafeteria media center in the amount of $24,456 from SWAS 5 excess funds. You'll see in how I have itemized that the four clear touch panels and associated expenses come to $15,322.90. And those uh, will be purchased using an existing RFP uh, that was still in place from Tech Optics. And then the 30 Chromebooks charging cards and associated expenses in the amount of $9,133.10 will be purchased from CDW as they were the low quote of the three quotes we did get. Dr. Williams, well, didn't we uh, <coughs> implement a policy that we did not have to approve certain items? I think it's under 30. Uh, under 30? But since we are kind of outgating all the ability, we wanted to bring things up. Okay. Any questions? Motion. Motion to approve. Second. Got a motion by Dr. Dr. Ramsey, second by Mr. Smith. All those in favor? Motion carries. Thank you, Ms. Uh, colleagues, let me also, uh, Rob Jones here with us, the Legacy Mural team is working on a proposal for the new. Uh, cafeteria Media Center Atrium, which faced the uh, horseshoe, the glass atrium faced the horseshoe, with some additional technology needs that uh, 
Ms. Hobson will identify and uh, bring to us as uh, once I identify it, focus. But we're trying to take some elements of the photographic mural to a different level of or of video displays, interior and exterior, since it's the last painting. So more is coming soon, but it's in the same category. Mr. Nelson, I'll start doing some um, research to try to determine the best uh, options that are available. We'll bring those back to you. Thank you, Thank you Ms. Hoffman. All right, are there any discussion items? Uh, uh, November is approaching, and uh, twice in the past so decade or so, we have uh, awarded special veterans to Palmer, uh, which takes a little publicity and recruitment. So I'd like forward to encourage the staff to uh, proceed with uh, publicizing the fact that, that special veterans diplomas are available to those who did not complete high school. Uh, the timing is such that uh, once the applicants have submitted their data, then the diplomas are awarded year better than today. And again, it takes the time. Uh, secondly, I have just a uh, suggestion for Dr. Williams in your study of the uh, West Side TAD. Uh, we look forward to a report and would like to add a thought there to reconfigure the TAD committee to be proportionate to the tax bills. In your study of West Side, would you please add that thought? Thank you. Anybody else? A motion to adjourn into, into uh, executive session. So moved. All right. A motion by Mr. Morgan, second by Dr. Randy. All in favor. Thanks everyone for coming.